Hello, Cooper Glover, 1972 here. Of course, you know me as Brian. Uh, so I I was just going through YouTube, um, you know, looking around. And um, so I, I came across this this, this um, tag video called The Ruined Good Movie Tag. Um, and I was looking for Marty's channel, uh, his channel being the Trash Picture Show. But anyway, so I came across this tag he had done, and it's called the the Ruin Good Movie Tag. And I, it's been a, he did it back in 2020. I can't remember exactly when in 2020, but it, um, but um, when I heard, when I watched his video and I saw what he was talking about, I thought thought it was kind of an interesting uh, topic to discuss. So I thought I would contribute a video to this to um, this topic. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it a little out of order because I can't remember them. Um, can't, I can't remember them all off the top of my head, and also I'm gonna do it out of order because I'm I'm still trying to figure out uh, answers to some of the questions. You know, there's five five questions, and I can I think right now only think of I think basically only one answer to one of the questions but I, I like knew it instantly like when he said it when he said this particular question that particular question is um what actor ruined a good movie for you and i think the go-to answer for me would be um elijah wood in the lord of the rings movies not that the lord of the rings movies are you know um citizen kane lawrence of arabia um you know um Clockwork Orange, Barry Lyndon, Doctor Strange, Love, Two Thousand One. You know they're not. Uh, there will be blood. They're not. They're not up to that par. Um, kind of films. You know I. Yeah. You know. Um, um, La Dolce Vita. Um, I, I don't know. I'm going. I'm. I'm just saying a few films here. Eight and a half. You know. Um, um, the Last Emperor. Um, um, what's the other film he made? Uh, the Conformist. You know Ber Berlucci. Um, so it's you know Ikiru or Tokyo Story or Seven Samurai. It's not in that. It's not. So what I'm start, trying to say is it's not in that realm of. It's not on that on that tier that level of films. The Lord of the Rings, but they're entertaining. They're a lot of fun. Um, you know, you just take it, I mean, the, yeah, they're just entertaining, but I, I think the person, Elijah Wood sort of, sort of makes the films kind of bad because, um, well, his, the, the, the guy that comes along with him, Sam, Samwise Ganji, played by Sean Astin, Sean Astin actually read the Lord of the Rings books and I, uh, you know, he was, he was like saying things like, "Oh, you know, we should do this because it's it's said in the in the Lord of the Rings books that Samwise Gamgee says this." And Elijah Wood basically didn't even read the books. You know, I, I, I you know, I, I think you can see that on the special features on the Lord of the Rings extended editions. And you know, the Lord of the Rings extended editions are fa fascinating. You know, they they get into every 
facet of the of the film you know like the, they tell you what they ate for lunch practical jokes they played on each other it's like exhaustive you know they show all, every single sketch they had for every single character so it's very exhaustive but i i just think elijah wood dampens the whole trilogy he, i mean he just doesn't bring his game and and frankly I think Elijah Wood is not the greatest actor. Um, the only film I, I mean, I, 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 I want to be fair. Like, like I, I say with like Ron Howard, I'm not a fan of Ron Howard's films, but I do like um, Cocoon is a good film, and I like Cinderella Man. But basically, generally speaking, I think Ron Howard is a mediocre director. I can't stand Apollo 13 um, and Beautiful Mind. Bleh, it's kind of mad to me, but. So anyways, that's the answer to that question. What actor ruins a movie for you? And it's technically not ruined. I mean, I will watch The Lord of the Rings. I don't know when I'll watch watch them again. I, I don't. But, you know, he, I don't know if he ruins it where James Bond and M go to Scotland. Um, if, if you haven't seen the movie and you don't want it spoiled, then don't watch this part, you know, but anyways, if you've seen it or you don't care, then I'm just, I'll go ahead. Anyways, they go to Scotland and they go to James Bond's house where he lived when he was a child. And, uh, the, was he a butler or a housekeeper or something played by, uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name. Um, hang on. I'll, I'm going to try to remember his name. Okay, I, I can think of the guy who, who it's Albert Finney. So he plays, um, I don't know, he's, he was James Bond's butler or, or um, something like that, you know, when he was a child. So anyways, they construct these devices in his old house um, in order to um, this, to, this, uh, to, um Defend themselves from from uh, Javier Bardem's character and his 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 group of bad guys, and um, you know, watching all the James Bond movies, you know, you generally speaking, in most of them, you have Q, who gives James Bond these sophisticated devices, and in this particular film, um, you don't see that, or maybe you do. I don't know. Maybe because. I think Q is in the movie, a different, not Desmond Llewellyn, because he was dead at that point, but the new Q, uh, I think he's in this film, or maybe he was at the end of the film, I can't remember, um, but I just didn't like the MacGyver type ending, because it, it doesn't seem very James Bond, and, and that was kind of, that was kind of a letdown for me, but it's still entertaining, I still enjoy it, but that's a little bit of a damper. So that's my answer to that question. So let me, so I got three more to go. Um, so I'm going to stop the video right here. And of course, I'll come back right on so you won't notice that I've, time has passed. But I'll be back in a sec. Some of these questions are a little hard for me to come, come up with answers to because I think generally speaking, I if I'm going to remember a movie, it's probably going to be a good movie because I... The ones I don't like, sometimes I like a, to get a palate cleanser. Like if I watch a really bad movie, I have to wash myself with a good movie, you know, to get the the stink of the bad movie off of me because I, I just I can't stand bad movies. I mean, well, let me put it to you this way. I Basically, any film I watch, even if I can't stand it, I'll watch it all the way through the, to the end to give it – because sometimes the ending or the middle of the film will be better than the starting or – um, it'll, if it's, and if it's bad throughout, at least through the, at the ending, more so the ending than the middle, but the ending might explain what I was confused about at the start or the middle of the film. So, but anyways, um, so what was the, what was the answer to the, I mean, what was the, um, that, the question, um, hang on, I can't remember, hang on. Going back for, for a second, I, there's, I did think of another another um, one for what actor ruined a perfectly good movie, or what, however it's phrased. Um, the, you know, the the go to one, of course, is Elijah Wood for Lord of the Rings. But I also thought of, of this before um, I recorded this video, and that's um, 
um, probably two actors in the same movie, um, Keanu Reeves and um, Anthony Hopkins in um, Drac Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, Gary Oldman does a fantastic performance in that, but Gary Oldman's a very good actor, and he can morph. He's a chameleon. He can be. He can be. He can play all sorts of characters. He's really good into inhabiting his characters. And the female vampires are great. You know, he plays Dracula great. Um, but uh, Keanu Reeves, he sounds kind of awkward when he talks. You know, it doesn't. You can't buy into his nineteenth-century. Um, Vernacular, nineteenth century. Um, you just you just don't you can't buy the way he talks. It doesn't sound authentic. And then Anthony Hopkins is is Van Helsing. Um, I think he's Van Helsing in that because I haven't watched it recently. But um, I, I he's a good actor, but and he sort of hams it up in this film in, in Bram Stoker's Dracula. I mean, he he kind of lays it on a bit thick and it's so those two performances are very noticeable and they they sort of take you out of the movie um yeah it, it sort of it sort of puts a damper on it so that's 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 so that's my additional answer for that particular question but i'm i'm, I'm gonna try and um think of the other answers so um I, i'm gonna stop the video again of course you you won't notice because i'll just stop it and then you know i'll be back right back on so uh, I'll have the other answers of the question following this. Okay, I think I got the third question, and that is a chronological order, of course. What movie was ruined by bad special effects? I think I'll go with a black hole on that. The set design wasn't that great either. Um, but, and I think the ending might might not be that bad. You know, I, I think I'm, I'm beginning to think the ending... I might I might might have warmed up to the ending of the film. Um, I, I think it's kind of kind of cool the, how it ends, but um, yeah, the, the special effects in the black hole are pretty awful in my opinion. And I know you know it's campiness. Maybe people like that, or like you can see the string the the wires pulling. Um, it's, I think it's Ernest Borgnine, and I I can't remember the other actors and the robots being pulled up and. It sort of takes you out of it. Um, I know that some people don't let don't let that bother them, but you know that sort of bothers me. Um, I think I noticed in. Um, I, I don't think George Powell directed it, but he did the special effects or War, War of the Worlds. Um, I think the Criterion release they don't have the the I, I bought the Criterion release, but the wires you don't see being held holding the the um, saucers up and. But the older version, you see the, the wires, and it's, you know, you know that it's an old movie, and they didn't have the technology to, or, or well, they might have had the technology, but it would have been a pain, maybe, I don't know. But you see the wires holding up the saucers, and it sort of takes you out of the film. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, so um, yeah, so I, the black hole would be my answer to that question. And maybe in addition, War of the Worlds, the old War of the Worlds. So that's my answer to that question. So now, now i got two more left. So um, I'm just going to have to think about what they are. Okay, I, I now remember the, the, the film that I was ruined for me when I found out something about it. And that is the Twilight Zone movie. Um, I watched it on video, I think in the 80s when I was a kid or a teenager. Um... And in that particular movie, um, if you have a, there, there's a um, streaming w uh, website called Shudder. It's like Netflix, only it's ho horror movies. And they do, they have, you know, they have series, uh, shows. So they have a documentary series called Cursed Films, uh, where they talk about The Exorcist and uh, The Omen uh, and a few others. And, and one of the ones they cover is the Twilight Zone movie. And uh, th that was an anthology-directed um, film, which meant there were four directors on, for each of the short films. So one of the films was directed by uh, um, John, John, what's his, John Landis, John Landis. And, um, I, you know, I, I, he, had, he had come off from making, um, I think, 
Animal House first, yes. And then he made, uh, which is a film I'm not wild about. Um, I guess it's just not my type of film. And then he made another film called An American Werewolf in London, which I think was a pretty good success. I, I saw that in the 80s. I, I bought a copy of it um, a while back, but I haven't watched it. But um, but anyways, so I think he was riding in a, on a wave of success. So he, made, he, he was making this... He was shooting his version, not his version, his portion of the Twilight Zone movie, and he had he had an actor named Vic Morrow, and he had two children, and um, the character that Vic Morrow plays is he's a prejudiced guy, um, and he like hates he hates different groups of people and everything. But anyways, uh, there's a there's a, there was a scene that they shot. I think he's. He's put in Vietnam, and he's with two children. I, maybe they're Vietnamese children or something. I don't. I can't. I can't remember awfully well. But anyways, so they were shooting the scene, and they had a helicopter flying up above. And I think the safety people were the people that were, you know, regarding the safety of the set. They were saying to him, "You shouldn't be doing this. You could get these people injured." And he was sort of like, "Well, in the in the documentary, there's they're saying that." John Landis was kind of um, full of himself. Like he, he said, like, oh, nothing's going to happen. I, I got this covered, you know. And what happened was the helicopter, I think, got too close to the kids and, and Vic Morrow, and they, it killed them. So it wasn't, it wasn't. I think when murder's done accidentally, it's not called first degree. Maybe it's third degree, second degree. So it wasn't done intentionally. It was manslaughter. And I don't think he was directly responsible because he didn't go to jail or anything, but he, he attended the trials of, um, you know, when, when the, after they had passed away. So it sort of, maybe it put a scarlet letter on him or, or stained his reputation a bit. Um, maybe Steven Spielberg, maybe he still does. I, I don't know. I, I think he doesn't want anything to do with him because Steven Spielberg directed a, a portion of the film as well. So, but anyways, so that's my answer to that question. And I think I have one more, so I'll get to that in just a second. Okay, um, this is the last question. What line ruined a per, uh, perfectly good script? I still think it's a good film. I still love watching it, and it's my favorite Tarantino film, and that's Kill Bill Volume 1. But parts of the film, and I, I think it's more than one line, but parts of the film have kind of awkward sentencing i find that with tarantino's too talky to me um i i do like a few of his films like inglorious bastards i like um the kill bill films um there's another one i like of his um i can't remember what it is uh glorious bastards kill bills mine mine one two oh django unchained yes okay Anyways, um, Kill Bill Volume 1, it's visually beautiful. I saw it twice in the theaters because I couldn't wait for it to come out on DVD. And I think Volume 1 is better than Volume 2, but Volume 2 is pretty good too. But anyways, um, maybe 2 is kind of talky. Yeah, 2 is kind of pretty, well, obviously it's Tarantino, he's talky. But um, yeah, um, parts of it are... Where can I point out? Um, hang on. Let me let me just um, think this through. Uh, hang on. I'll be right back. Okay. So Kill Bill Volume One. Um, when Daryl Hannah goes into the hospital room where um, the bride is Beatrice Kiddo, Beatrice Kiddo. So um, she's about to kill her. She's gonna like take out her IV or something, and you don't see. Bill's face, but you see him um, pulling in and out of sort of a sheath, and he's saying something like, um, we're going to abort this, and she's saying like, uh, I, well, I don't know, it just, it seems kind of awkward sounding, and, and I guess it's Tarantino's uh, um, vernacular, his, his way of shooting things, or making his, 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 his rhythm, and, and that's kind of disconcerting sometimes. So, um, 
I can, you know, I can, I can also see it in in, in Inglorious Bastards. Like at the start, um, there um, and I, with this whole video, if you haven't seen these films and you you will want to see them, see them. You know, stop it if you don't like if Inglorious Bastards, for example. If you really want to see that film, you don't want to hear anything about it, then don't watch the rest of this. If you if if you don't care or you've seen it, then keep watching or whatever. Anyways, um, the Nazi, the star of the film, played by Christoph Waltz. Um, I I do enjoy the movie, but there's he's saying like, what language does he speak first? French, I think. And then he says, how about we start talk talking in English for the rest of the scene? which sort of takes me out because uh, why would they be t talking, speaking English in France when they speaking, when they be speaking French or German because they're right next to each other and probably more so French when, when he try to speak French to the people in the, whatever it is, a farmhouse or, uh, but why would he be speaking French? Why would he be speaking English? I don't, I don't, I don't quite get that. I, I, I do like Inglorious Bastards a lot. I like how they, how the Jewish woman and the bastards lock the Nazis in the movie theater and, and burn the theater to the ground. That's fantastic, you know. But um, so just little qualms like that, you know. Um, so I guess it finishes it finishes the video up. Um, I, I also want to address. Um, a friend of mine, Sasha, whose uh, channel is Sexy Monkey on YouTube, uh, he asked me to do two tags, and I, I have neglected to do them for quite some time. And I, I not consciously, um, but um, I, I should try and get on those. But I haven't ignored them. Uh, I just um, haven't gotten around to doing them. But um, so I, 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 and I, I honestly, I can't remember what they were. I'd have to, I'd have to backtrack and look at probably go on to Sasha's channel and look what, look at what they are. Um, and in other news, I, I'm, I'm still working on the Hiroshima album, as I've said before. Um, I've got, I, I had Sasha record some stuff for me, and I, I, I asked him to um, re, re-record something for me. But anyways, so that's the progress on that. Um, in this particular video, maybe, maybe I'll put just a portion of the Hiroshima album at the start of this uh, video and at the end of this video, because it. And I've mentioned before in people's streams. I don't know if I've mentioned it in a video, but it it seems like the album is going to be about two and a half to three hours long. It's about it's a concept album. It's got. Um, Spring, it's five parts, spring, uh, youth, uh, summer, war, autumn, aftermath, winter, death, and then spring again with uh, peace. And I've got most of the majority of the album has been, is, is finished being done. There's a few songs that I'm I'm working on. I've written the lyrics. I might rewrite more. more I don't know if I'll add more lyrics, um, but I have to fit the lyrics to the music, or or take the music, or, or take the music and fit it to the lyrics. And I've got to edit the the guitars, and the, I don't want to add drums or bass, or you know whatever. Um, I've got to work on that. Um, so uh, and and I, I'm waiting on the, my cousin's daughter to do some singing on it. So it won't be. So in other words, like I said last night on, on Ethel's stream, uh, I won't be, um, this is not going to be done in a few weeks. So uh, it, it, you might even say probably by the end of this year is not going to be finished. I, I don't know. It's, it's all depending on, 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 you know, what I can get done when, you know. So I'm trying to. And, and then when I've got everything, I think I'm going to mix it. So I, I think I'm going to have maybe... Um, maybe like one guitar on the left side of the speaker and then on the right side of the speakers, another guitar. And I got to deliberate on that. So um, it's going to be a while. So anyways, thanks for watching. And um, I'll be here whenever I can put up a new video. Okay. Have a good day. Bye now. So,
this is really the end of the video and, and I forgot because this is a because it's a tag video I forgot to tag people so I'm gonna do it sort of off the top of my head I don't know if I'm gonna list a ton of people but let's see uh, Sasha sexy monkey I'll list him uh, slipcover King Sean LJ uh, LJ Draco's movie channel um, Let's see, Roger, Channel Downstar, um, Jace, um, Jace, I don't know if you have more than one channel, Movie Man Jace or Jace or I don't know, Jace anyways, Paul um, from Australia, I, 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 I think you have a YouTube channel, I, I can't remember, um, let me see, Dice Gay, Beppu, in Japan, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of, um, let's see, who else could I pick? Ethel, 13 Originals, um, who else could I, um, uh, tag? Uh, thinking, I think, I think I'll go with that. Um, yeah. All right. That's it. That's the, the end of the video. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye now.